All right, perfect. So just a little bit about myself. So my name is Sandra Tricoli. I am a business owner. So I own Savvy Creations PR, which is a PR business, um, marketing agency, also social media strategist, business consultant. And my background is journalism and public relations. So I've been uh, working, I've had the company now for six years and really working with businesses to, you know, I guess my elevator pitch, if I was to have one, would be I work with my clients to position them as the go-to in the industry. So, you know, depending on what your business is, depending on what your industry is, depending on, you know, what it is that you really want to be known for, I think that's really one of the key things that you need to identify before starting to work on your personal brand. So I'll go into that a bit more detail later. So what are we going to do in today's workshop slash webinar? So what is personal branding? We're going to identify what it is because I think a lot of people get confused what personal branding is and, and do I need a personal brand? Uh, the second one is talking about tips on how do we develop our personal brand because I think that's really important to be able to understand the steps that need to be taken in order to develop our personal brand, the importance of having a personal brand, keys to success, as well as how to create a strong brand online. If we get time, depending on how I go with time, we can talk a little bit about the different social media platforms and how to develop our brand online. Um, you know, the, our online presence today is a huge part of, um, you know, having a brand. I think today a lot of businesses, I'm working from home today, a lot of businesses aren't working in the offices. You know, I work 50% in an office, 50% on the road or from home. But if we don't have a strong online presence, it's really hard for people to actually find us. So there's a few stages. Obviously, stage one is going, this is what I want my personal brand to be. Stage two is developing the personal brand and creating the personal brand. And stage three is then the execution, which is then going onto your social media, which is, you know, becoming a thought leader in your industry. Um, and, 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 you know, how do we do that? And we'll go through that today. So that's really like the three main steps is identifying what what, what do I want people to know me as? Like, what do I stand for? Second one is actually creating that. And the third step is then obviously executing that. So it does take a few hoops to jump through. And then obviously once you've created and once you've executed it, it's then consistency. You know, you can have the most amazing product, the most amazing business, the most amazing anything. But if you don't actually use the right platforms to go and, you know, showcase your brand or your personal brand then chances are people are not going to hear about you so yeah that's really what we're going to talk about today so what does personal branding mean to you I think you know personal branding there's a lot of different things that come to mind when someone goes oh personal branding to me obviously having a background in journalism and public relations to me a personal brand is like our own personal PR so it's basically what do people think when they say your name, right? You've got a business, so you might have a company with one person or 100 people, and then you've got the personal brand, which is you, and then you've got your company brand. So for me, one of the mottos that I really live by when it comes to business is people buy people before people buy things. Um, so, you know, you being the leader of your organization or your company or, you know, you still need to work on your brand. And I've heard a lot of people, you know, say, I mean, it is changing now, but people have this thing where they're like, I don't want anyone to know who I am. Like, I want to just kind of hide behind the business. And, and that's fine. But people are a lot more likely to connect with the human beings behind the business than just the business. So that's where the personal branding comes in. So personal branding is the ongoing process of establishing a prescribed image or impression in the mind of others about an individual. Keyword there is ongoing process, right? It's ongoing. It doesn't, we don't just get a logo made up and colors and we're like, that's it. It's done. We're, you know, this is my personal brand. It's an ongoing process. So <clears throat> a few weeks ago, I was talking to my friend and I've been telling everyone this because I absolutely loved, I loved this simple yet profound answer. I was speaking to one of my friends and he said, oh, you know, Sandra, I spoke to John Hughes and I asked John Hughes, John, why do you still market yourself? Like, why are you still doing advertising? And, you know, everyone knows who John Hughes is and everyone knows what you do. And his answer was to stay relevant, right? And I absolutely loved the simplicity of that, but the power of that, because when it comes to personal branding or putting ourselves out there, it's not just about hey, 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 you know, it's about people actually, you're staying on top of people's mind. On average, people need 
16 touch points, one six touch points to see you or hear about you before they make a decision to go ahead with you. So, you know, personal branding isn't just a one-off thing where you go and say, yeah, I'm going to do a thought leadership piece or I'm going to, you know, post something on social media. It really is an ongoing thing. So it's the association people have to you to your name. Every tweet you send, every status update you make, every picture you share, share, and even every word you say in social company contributes to your personal brand. Because of social media and our subsequent levels of visibility, personal branding is one of today's leading career strategy topics and is a central tool for thriving today's work environment. So if you do want your business to go to the next level, if you do want to become that authority of, you know, what it is that you do, then you really need to look at how can I create my, you know, a strong personal brand where people will come to me based on my subject matter. I'm just going to ask because we've got a few, can you see me just a bit different than I normally see Jackie? Uh, Jackie, I can't see you because it's it's a webinar. So it's I think they don't they don't they change it a little bit. Um, I just saw your message just then. Can I get just maybe one or two of you guys because you, I'll allow you to talk to just let me know what you do. I always like to. We won't get time to go through everyone because there is ten of us here. But um, uh, let's have a look, Christine. I'll just allow you to talk. Can you tell me, Christine, what your business is? I do um, team building and corporate training. Perfect. Great. So I'm assuming you're on LinkedIn? Yes, correct. Yes. Right. So would LinkedIn be one of your core kind of places where you're promoting yourself? Um, LinkedIn and Facebook. Perfect. Yep. Beautiful. And are you, how regularly are you posting on LinkedIn about yourself and, and your business? LinkedIn, not as much as Facebook. So LinkedIn probably, uh, um, LinkedIn's a bit, a little bit different because um, I also work. So my business is uh, got another you. part of me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> that's so the hard LinkedIn thing, is isn't it? Sometimes when you've got a job and you're trying to kind of do like a side job and you're like, oh, I can't promote my business too much now because my employees won't pay me. Um, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. So you've, yeah. So LinkedIn, I think definitely for if you do corporate training, corporate coaching, though, LinkedIn would be what, my, in my advice, would be one of your stronger kind of platforms. What you could do, though, if you did want to use another entity to not have to promote, you could always have the create a company page under your name. So you could go, you know, Christine, I'm not sure what your last mm -hmm. name is, but you could always have Christine, da da da, corporate coach. Um, yeah. So, so we yeah. have, um, so I'm in a partnership with the business. So we do have a business LinkedIn page and a business Facebook page. So me and my business partner both post on both of them. Yeah. Um, right. She's more posting on LinkedIn and I'm more posting on Perfect. Facebook. So Fabulous. just because time is limited when we work at the same time of course of course and that's the thing when you are working full-time and you're trying to build that side business it can be a bit hard thank you for sharing that so much christine i've got julia here that's written i'm julia for for my for my earth eco food storage and launching skincare we've been around for 15 years it's steady but i want to go online not just wholesale to shops Hi, Julia. Lovely to meet you. Um, so, yeah, same for you. I definitely think, you know, your skincare brand and your business brand, that's like one thing, but then you want to kind of become that educator, that thought leader about the importance of, you know, um, healthy kind of, you know, eco food storage and skincare and the benefits of eco and things like that. So you want to become that kind of um, voice of what you do, if that makes sense. Um, you know, so there's a few people that we think are like, you know, we, we, that come to mind, you think like life coach, you might think Tony Robbins, or you might think, so be more of a guru with products, not just my products. Yeah, absolutely. So talk about the benefits of your products, talk about, you know, people will connect with you. And when they like what you say and what you promote, then they're going to be a lot more likely to actually want to go and tap into your products and go, oh, cool, you know. And that, so there's a lot of things that we can talk about, but also it's not just when we talk about personal branding, it's who we align ourselves with as well. So, you know, if you have a product-based business, then I would be looking at which kind of influencers or ambassadors 
um, are kind of aligned with our personal brand because they then become an extension of our personal brand. So there's different levels to your personal brand. You've got you, but then you've also got what people say about your brand and then you've got people that promote your brand. So if you have a product, in particular product-based business, I would definitely look at, okay, which kind of, um, you know, influencer or ambassadors align with my product um, and, and, you know, I can get them to promote my product as well because that then reflects your personal brand. And this is really like, you know, I didn't have this in the workshop, but it comes up, you know, anything you do is a part of your personal brand. You know, what, um, networking events you're a part of is a part of your personal brand. Uh, speaking gigs that you go to are part of your personal brand. So it's not just how you show up online. It's also how you show up offline. It's how you present yourself when you're out and about. It's, you know, all these things are really a part of your personal brand. Um, hi, Jackie. And what's your business? NLP, hypnotherapy coach, I have both online and in person. Great. So, yeah, once again, you know, NLP, <clears throat> hypnotherapy, you know, a lot of your content is going to be educating people with the importance of NLP, you know, become that educator. You know, when I talk about building our personal brand, we've got who we are, but then the content that we share, I break down the ratio of content as follows. 80% of the content that we share online has to be educational inspirational, conversational with 20% promotional. So what do I mean by that? Big chunk of the content that we share needs to educate. We need to share value. We need to share insights. We need to share things that potentially other people won't know because by doing that, we position ourselves as an authority. By positioning ourselves as an authority, we build that trust. By building that trust, then people are going to be more likely to want to come with us if we know what we're talking about. If you're always trying to sell, 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 um, then it's, you know, it, it, it doesn't come across good. People don't like to be sold to. That's one thing that I know for sure is that people do not like to be felt like they're being sold to. People like to feel like they're educated and they're making their own decision whether they want to buy a service or go ahead with a service or a product. Um, oh, cool. Hi, Renee. Love that. Leading a new project, running camps for young people with intellectual and, and um, psychosocial disabilities. Fabulous. Love that. Um, so once again, I think, you know, you've got, you know, social media, you've got your website, the main forms of really building your personal brand online are social media today. Uh, you know, I remember not long ago, I was speaking to a journalist and we were speaking, she, you know, social media is media. So, you know, for yourself as well, it's talking about the benefits. It's like the features and the benefits of what it is that you offer, whether it's a product or a service, that all comes under the personal brand. So I'll go back quickly to the slides. But thank you all for sharing that. And I will just really quickly mention, I'm not sure, because <clears throat> I know some of you in here would have, um, there's 15 of us, which is great. I know quite a few of you in here have already probably um, had the, uh, the ASBAS consults. Um, so if you do, you get three hours through the Australian Small Business Advisory, you get three hours worth of one-on-one -on -one and you get four hours worth of work, uh, webinars and workshops and things like that. So if you do need extra assistance and you haven't used up your three hours already, I also do offer the one-on-ones. I do take a very limited amount of people per month though. Um, so if you do feel at the end of this workshop, you do need a one-on-one, -on -one, I'll send you all an email with today's slides and then you can book in for um, May because I'm booked out for April. So that's just something thing as well that by the end of today if you do need more assistance then definitely um i can help you out with that <laughs> my areas of specialty are social media public relations um and just content marketing <clears throat> uh hi trevor here we have a software product called staffed use for applicant management oh yes trevor hello of course i know i know you, you um thank you for joining in today um so yes staff definitely check out staff so i think this is great if you all actually want to um type into the chat box um who you are and what you do i think it's great and you can all have a read of that and um yeah if there's anyone you want to connect with in particular then then you can do so um, just yeah put your put your um what you can do actually in the chat box not a bad idea put hi I am what you do and then if you want to put your email at the bottom and then if anyone here wants to connect with you at the end um, you can just click on that email so let's talk a little bit about the keys to success in personal branding so <laughs> what really <clears throat> contributes to a strong personal brand is um, having okay perfect thanks Trevor um, 
understanding your skills. This is really key. I genuinely believe that we're all given a certain set of skills because we excel in them. And I think knowing what our core skills are is really, really important to helping us build our brand. You know, I feel like some people are just really good at this and not really good at that, or they're really good at this. And, you know, so I think if you identify, so I'm going to give you a little bit of like homework, I guess, and, you know, you do it in your own time, but I want you to identify what are your top three skills? Like, what do you genuinely feel like, you know what, I'm really good at this, whether it's business development, whether it's, you know, workshops, whether it's research, you know, it could be an introvert or an extrovert kind of activity. But what do you feel are your top? Is it communication? Is it creativity? You know, identify your top three skills, right? So I want you to do that. You don't have to do it now, um, but really write these things down because, you know, I think sometimes we just, we do things by default. Our business grows by default and we don't get extremely clear on like who we are, what we want to achieve, what our personal brand stands for and all the rest. So I really would love for you sometime today, you know, we've got the long weekend coming up, work on your business. You know, we're so busy working in our business that, you know, we're kind of running on empty. I really want you to step back and give yourself some time to really think about what is it? What is it that my personal brand and then do it for your company as well? So what are the top skills that you offer? Articulate what differentiates you from others. Now, you know, everyone I speak to, everyone has something different and unique about themselves. And it's not, we care about my customer or, you know, it's something genuinely that makes you different, that you feel is, is different to what you've seen out there. So identify what that is. Understand your unique strengths and added value. Effective networking techniques to promote your personal brand. That's really important. I think, you know, I always talk about the seven funnels to lead generation. How do we get leads for our business? And I'll go into that a bit later. But really, effective networking is going to be a great way to promote your personal brand. Um, understand the power of positive first impressions. Create your brand slogan. Do you have a brand slogan? You know, do, you might not. Obviously, a lot of companies have a brand slogan, like obviously, you know, Nike always comes to mind. But think about what your brand slogan is. But one of the biggest things that I really want you to do is identify or create an elevator pitch, right? Have an elevator pitch. Now, and, and work on it and remember it. So, you know, for me, my elevator pitches, I work with clients to position them as the authority of their industry. Okay, that's my elevator pitch. I work with clients to help position them. An elevator pitch should include what problems you're solving and what solution you're offering, right? Because every successful business is a solution to someone else's problem. So, you know, it's not going to happen within half an hour potentially of you sitting there, but write down, okay, these are the top three, you know, problems that my clients are facing and these are the top three solutions or this is the solution that I offer to this problem and how can you now create an elevator pitch around that? So, you know, I can see, and in a way, in a way, you know, I can see here, like Trevor, you've got here, let's have a look at the things you guys have written, because what you've written here is kind of like, hi, I'm Julia. Yeah, so, so we've been around for 15 years and it's steady, but I want to grow. Okay, so that's not, hi, I'm Julia, and I publish Educating Game for Numero, been around as a product for 29 years, but my business as a publisher and promoter for five years work predominantly in schools, but want to spread it further. Great. So, hi, I'm Jackie NLP. So I'm Renee, leading camp. Trevor, we have a software product for staff. Okay. So all of these things here, sorry, I've missed this from the first question. I'm new to the online nutrition coaching business. A lot of my current online brand is heavily focused around my full-time job. I'm Julie Erna off, yep. Okay. So like think about, hi, I'm Sandra from Savvy Creations PR. I help clients position themselves as the authority industry in the industry. Sorry, I help my clients position them. I help position my clients as the authority um, in their industry via social media and public relations right so think about what you know and you don't have to say what the problem is but indirectly by you talking about what solution you offer you're then covering the problem it is okay so that's really important if I was to out of all these nine dots here um, or nine points I would say the most important one is to have an elevator pitch and the reason being is it's 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 going to keep your marketing quite consistent when you know this is kind of what you stand for Second one is build a powerful and impressive online presence. Today, more than ever, we're online, right? This is how people are finding us. This is this is our shop front. Our, you know, for me, we, if you know, if you you go past a shop, for example, in the city, let's say H and M, 
if the windows were completely blank and there was nothing in the window, then what would we do? We'll probably walk past. We might peep in because we're curious, but generally speaking, we would we would we would we would keep walking, right? Because there's nothing that's going to make us go, oh wow, let's walk in. So you are the visual merchandiser for your business, right? I want you to think about that. You are the visual merchandiser for your business. So most people will only see you today through your social media platforms and through your website, okay? Because a lot of the time, even if someone's ref- even if someone refers you, someone goes, oh, go speak to Trevor. They're amazing at what they do. Chances are this person is still going to go and check you out online before they reach out to you. So you need to make sure that your personal brand online is quite powerful and strong and aligned with what it is that you stand for. And last of all, don't be afraid to innovate yourself. You know, I think a lot of the time people think I've created this brand, I've got to stick to this brand forever. This is my brand, that's it. Not at all. You know, there's a lot of companies and a lot of people that are constantly innovating themselves, that are constantly upskilling and changing their, you know, so it don't be afraid to innovate your personal brand. I think it's actually wonderful to innovate your personal brand because it makes people stay tuned with what you're doing you know it's kind of like if we look at some big brands like your nokias and you know all those that never kind of innovated what happened they fell off so similar thing to your personal brand you must innovate yourself as well to stay relevant (coughs) personal branding is important because it helps give a person more credibility It's never been more competitive to plan a new job, earn a paycheck, or obviously get business leads. With more people building personal brands, you need to put yourself out there to get noticed. Personal brand can let recruiters find experts like you or business owners find leads like you. With the surge of social media, you must manage your own reputation both online and offline. So the beautiful thing about today and the social media, you know, it it can be, it can work both ways. It could be, um, you know, a positive and a negative. A positive is that we can manage our own personal reputation to some degree because if people say something negative about our business or about ourselves, it's great because we can jump on Twitter, we can jump on LinkedIn, we can jump on our Facebook, Instagram, wherever, and say, well, actually, no, that's not true. We can defend ourselves. Whereas, you know, if we went back 20, 30 years ago, we heavily relied on the external media such as you know, publications and things like that to be, to build our personal brand. So no longer do you need to be a celebrity or someone famous to have a personal brand. So I really like this quote. I just put this in here. Building a personal brand is much bigger than building a business. The only exit strategy is legacy. So to build, to build a personal brand, you must first identify what your personal brand is you would want it to stand for. So I, you know, I, I did a lecture a couple of weeks ago, about two weeks ago at university um, at Murdoch Uni uh, about personal branding and, and, you know, we're talking about LinkedIn and that. And I think, you know, for students, it's really great because it's a blank canvas. They can create whatever they want. In fact, my business is Savvy Creations. And the reason I named my business Savvy Creations was because I was like, we can create things. You know, we don't need to wait for opportunities. I remember I finished uni and a lot of people said to me, oh, Sandra, you need to move to Melbourne or Sydney if you want to, you know, work in PR and all the rest. And I thought, well, actually, no, I want to create my own opportunities as well as you, I wanted to create my own brand. So, it's really exciting because it doesn't matter where you are in your business journey right now, you can literally start with a blank canvas. And that's what I was saying to these uni students. They're finishing uni, you know, they have their whole life ahead of them. And what do you want to be known for? You know, what are your skills? What's your, what's your, what's your unique selling proposition, right? What, what do you want when you walk out of a room? What do you want people to say about you? right? So today is about the personal brand, not the company brand, because that's different. It's about your brand. So I really want you to think about that because it's like when we go on a holiday, I look at this as similar to an itinerary, right? When you go on a holiday somewhere, you need to kind of have a bit of a plan in terms of where you want to go in order to get there. It's all fun and games saying, I want to go and, you know, I want to go here. But when you don't have a clear roadmap to get there, chances are you get lost along the way. So I really want you to think about what your skills are. What are my top three skills? What's my unique, uh, sorry, what's my top three skills? What is my elevator pitch? And what do I really want to be known for? You are literally the architect of your own brand. You know, you don't need to rely on other people to create your own brand. 
you know, and this is the thing. A lot of the time, people's personal brands are built by default. It's not something they've chosen. It's just something that's been created. But you actually have the power to create that yourself now. So I really want you to go away and think about that and write it on a piece of paper. If you believe in vision boards, create a vision board for yourself. You know, I've got here, you are the architect of your own, of your personal brand. So, you know, I have a vision board for myself and I've put up there like my business and photos and words and, you know, things that I want to achieve and things that stand for my personal brand, whether it's colors, whether it's, you know, things that align with you, right? And a lot of the time, our personal brand is very much so built on our personal values as well, right? So it's not just our skills, but our values. So what are your top, you know, three skills? What is your elevator pitch? What do you want to be known for? And to identify all of those, you also look at what are my core values? Because knowing what your core values is going to once again help in creating that personal brand. And a personal brand is an evolution. It doesn't just, you don't go, I am X, Y, and Z, and this is it. It evolves. Our personal brand evolves. And that's why going back a few slides, don't be afraid to innovate. But you've got to have a bit of an idea in terms of what you want that personal brand to look like. I don't know if any of you here have heard of Gary V. Um, you know, he's got his own personal brand. He's loud. He's out there. He's full on. He's, you know, bright colors and like with his social. So he's, he's energetic, I would say, is his, his kind of word. And when you look at like all his online and offline appearances and anything he does with his brand, it's it's Gary V. He's he's got this. It's consistent. It's very consistent, right? You're not going to see him on a YouTube video being really quiet and softly spoken, and then on a, on something else really loud. He's quite consistent with his engagement, with his interaction, with how he speaks, with his social media posts, with everything he does, right? So he's got a massive media company under him called Vayner Media, but people buy Gary before they go to his company, right? So his company has grown and grown and grown, but really it's his content creation that he's been putting online and videos and posts and thought leadership pieces that have created him to be this thought leader in that digital space. So think about that a little bit. Think about what it is that I want to be known for and whether you write it down on a piece of paper, whether you write it on a vision board, you then start to work towards that. <clears throat> Pardon me. Historically, strong personal brands have been tied to community leaders, corporate executives, or successful politicians and celebrities. Today, the world has changed. In the age of social media, building and maintaining a personal brand has become a top priority. You no longer have to be traditionally famous in order to build your own personal brand. In fact, now the power lies in your hands. Don't ever think it's too late to begin. You know, I think we see this happen a lot um, and it's that imposter syndrome where we might compare ourselves to other people in our industry and think, oh, God, we've missed the mark and, you know, there's 10 people that are already thought leaders in, in my industry or there are already, you know, X amount of people that are really good at what they do and everyone knows about them. Competition is healthy. It means there's a demand for your product or your service. So, you've got to almost cut out the noise because it's very easy to, to get distracted by that, right? So think about what it is that your skills are, your values, what you want to be known for, what's your personal brand, and then try and cut out the noise, right? And as much as it's good to know who your competitors are, make sure you're not creating a brand that aligns with your competitors because then you're pretty much doing the same thing as them, right? Try and completely, and I know it can be hard, but you will find that, you know, for me, every and it doesn't necessarily have to be negativity, but the way I look at it is every moment of negativity is a moment taken away from productivity, right? So every moment you think about, oh, what about this? Da, 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 that's a minute of your life that you've taken away from you being productive to getting to where you want to be with your business, right? Or your personal brand. So just think about that, okay? What impact do you want to have with your personal brand? I think this is a really important thing to remember. So we've got what are your skills, what are your values, but what is your why? What is your impact that you want to make, right? Think about that. So today at some stage or tomorrow or the next couple of days, I want you to write down what are my top three skills, right? What um, impact do I, and, and what impact? So what are my top three skills? What are my values? And what impact do I want to have with my personal brand? Because I think to really have a strong brand, you need to have a much stronger why 
why do I do what I do? It's because, you know, and and, and I'll get, let's have a look. Uh, um, you know, I think all of you guys, I'm just reading some of these things that you've written, and I feel like there's some really strong whys here. So let me just ask, um, uh, let's have a look. I saw one, nutrition coaching, that was, uh, let's have a look. Aaron, I'll ask you, what is your why in your business? If you can hear me. No, maybe you can't hear me. Elena, what is your why in your business? Can you hear me? Oh, Aaron, you're driving. All good. I like it. <laughs> Who needs a podcast? I can, Elena. What, oh, what do you do and what's your business? Um, I am a brand designer and photographer. So yeah, I perfect. help. I help entrepreneurs to present their business professionally with um, branding packages. Yeah. And, uh, my why at the moment is helping um, mostly women to, you know, achieve uh, freedom, wealth, um, flexible working hours and all that sort of stuff that comes with running your own business. Mm -hmm. And so I help them to succeed at doing that um, by giving them a beautiful um, strategically designed brand. Why is that important for you? Um, I guess because um, running my own business has brought so many opportunities for myself. Like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, my business is mostly like a lifestyle business. I do it mostly for the lifestyle that comes with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I just love empowering other women to, to achieve the same so your why is to empower women to yeah. live a balanced lifestyle. That would be kind of like, you know, your core why is to really empower women to have a business, have an income, but also enjoy their lifestyle. Um, yeah, or whatever their goals are. Like, I know oh, there is goals, are, yeah. Yeah, some of my clients, for example, started the business because they thought it was a good opportunity to make some good money. Like, yeah. it's not always their lifestyle, but whatever their goal is, I help them to get there because... Um, these days, a business can't really survive without having a strong brand, as you're already explaining really well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. And I'll ask one more person. I'll ask Trevor. Hi, Trevor. Um, what would you say is the why for your business? So we <clears throat> create um, technology to streamline business. So our why really is helping business um, be successful by using technology. Yeah, um, yeah. Perfect. Beautiful. Thank you. And I think, you know, what we find is the more we dig deeper into what our why is, you'll start to create content that it has a lot more emotion. And when content has emotion tied to it, it always, always is 10 times more powerful than content that has rationale to it, right? So, when we break down our personal brand and our why and why we do what we do, we really start to engage people more that are aligned with us. When you, when you know your why, when you're so clear on what your values, your skills and your why, you then show up to the world in a way where it's your, you are your most authentic self. You know, and I think for me, like, or not, I think my, my why is to help businesses realize their full potential. That's my why, right? And I know this is really like interesting, but I was thinking this not long ago. I was like, why do I do what I do? Why do I love helping people like um, just, you know, become like their best version of themselves? Like, what is it about that? And then I realized I had this little like light bulb moment where I remember I was in year 10 at, 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 in, in high school. Um, and one of my English teachers, we did an essay. We did like this essay and long story short, we, we, he basically said, you know, there's someone in this class that's written an amazing, it was a play, sorry, it was a play. We got asked to write a play and I wrote a play and he said, there's someone in this class that wrote an amazing play. I was in year 10 and I want to pay them so I can use like copyright this play. And I totally didn't think, I was always like an okay student. I wasn't like the best student, but I was okay. And I remember him saying, Sandra, it's you. 
can I pay you $20 to use this for like, and I was like, what? And I felt weird taking $20 because I was like, no, that's fine. He's like, look, if you don't take the $20, I'm going to give it to someone else. I was like, okay, I'll take the $20. And you know, when you're in your tent, every dollar counts. And I remember like that moment like changed my life because it made me realize like I can do this. Like I can become that. I can, you know, someone believed in me right? Someone believed in me. And then I've, I genuinely, and I get goosebumps, I genuinely feel like that moment to me, didn't know it then, didn't know it for many years. But I realized that because somebody believed in me, it helped me believe in myself. So I now do that for my clients. Like I work with my clients because I want to show them that. And I don't say, oh, I'm just believing you because I genuinely want to get to know what they are about. And I believe in them. And with that, they then excel. So that's my why. My why is because I was believed, someone believed in me. So I now want to help my clients believe in themselves as well and help them get to that next level. So I think it's really interesting when we look at what our why is in what we do and think, has there been something in my life that's happened to me that has created this why for me? And a lot of the time you will find that there is some sort of link that something has happened to you in your life that has taken you on this journey to be where you are what you do you know that will help you create your personal brand so I think that's you know that was for me real like oh okay now I kind of know why I do what I do so yeah that was just a little a little story that I wanted to share with you all um and you know I urge you to kind of have a think about it yourself is there something that's happened in my life that was kind of a bit of that crossroads that made me choose this career path <clears throat> so we'll go down to the powerpoint back to the powerpoint <clears throat> Where are we? Where are we? Here we go. So what impact do you want to have? So for me, for example, I want to have the impact to help people become their best versions. This is a really good book. I'm not sure if you've read it or not, but Personal Branding, Self-Positioning and All Individual Branding by whatever name were first introduced in 1937 in the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. So if you haven't already read it, it's a fantastic book. And what I love about this book is that it is about, you've got to kind of already you know, you've got to have that itinerary. You've got to say, this is where I want to be. And then you kind of work backwards because when you have a, a, an image of yourself or your personal brand in a certain way, you then act by that personal brand. You live by that personal brand. You engage as that personal brand. But without you knowing what that is, it's really hard to, to, to get there. And you can get there, but it might take a lot longer. So if you haven't already and you're looking for a good book to read over the Easter break, I would definitely recommend Think and Grow Rich there's another one which I'll share with you in the coming um, in the coming slide so what are your values your values will determine your brand guidelines so you know your appearance if you value like um, you know if you don't value for example like looking presentable then your appearance will be I guess aligned with that or if you if you value you know dressing well then obviously your appearance is going to assist with that do you value, you know, conversation? So knowing what your values are is going to, you know, do you swear a lot? Do you value that? Do you not value that? This will determine the conversations you have. It will determine the things you talk about. Blog posts you write, once again, knowing what your values are, you will then go, well, this is what I'm going to talk about. This is what I'm going to write about. This is what I'm going to, you know, do a podcast about. So everything that you put out into the social world is aligned with what our values are. And also any activity that you take part in. So, you know, if you don't believe in something and it doesn't align with your values, chances are very high that you're not going to go ahead to this event or you're not going to take part of some activity if you feel like, well, that doesn't actually align with my values. Okay, so look at the values that you have established and, and see how, um, you know, what they are, what you will do, what you wouldn't do, and that will help you create your brand guidelines. People with strong brands are clear about who they are. They know and maximize their strengths. So this brings me to that very first slide. And I genuinely believe that knowing what your strong skill sets are is really going to help you excel your brand to the next level. <coughs> Excuse me. So identify that. And I go back 
keep going back to the skills, skills, values, but they are truly, I believe, the crucial uh, elements in creating a strong personal brand. So a few things to ask yourself. These are some questions for you to ask yourself that is going to assist you with your skills because sometimes what you think might be a skill of yours may not be a skill and vice versa, something that you were naturally so good at, but you're like, oh, that's not a skill. And a lot of the time people over override a skill because it comes so naturally to them you know so I think someone said to me not long ago oh Sandra you're so good at public speaking I was like not really and then I was like well do you know what I think because I just I enjoy it and it's kind of just a natural thing for me I don't think of it as a real skill because I'm like but then it is a skill it's definitely a skill so sometimes it's good to ask a few people and an activity that I always like to do with you know especially when it's face-to-face -face workshops is I get you to write down your top, you know, three or four skills and what your, you believe your personal brand is and then ask a friend or a colleague or an employee or anyone, hey, I'm doing this little exercise. What would you say are the top kind of five words that come to mind when you think about me or my personal brand? And I think it's really important to see, you know, if they match or if they don't match because wouldn't it be interesting if you think and you see yourself as this way but then someone's like, well, no, actually, I see you like this. So it's a really good little exercise for reflection to do. Um, so I would definitely urge you to do that. So some things to consider um, when we're talking about our super skills, which is going to then help determine our, our, our brand. What are the strengths that others acknowledge in me? When working in a team, what roles do I seek to fulfill? You know, is leadership a part of your brand? Is, is you know, computers a part of Like, identify what it is that you crave to do because that you will find is all aligned with your brand. When faced with an obstacle, what are my go-to skills to overcome it? What was the most successful project I ever tackled and what made me successful? What was the most important team role that I ever fulfilled and why? What strengths and skills come up over and over again? And don't worry, I will send you these slides. Which are my motiva what, what, sorry, what are my motivating skills? What are my burnout skills and skills that I've mastered but would rather not use every day? Which strengths and skills are going to be most helpful in achieving my goals and what skills are missing? So ask yourself all these questions and this will help you identify your top three skills. Okay, based on your responses in the previous questions, document your top five strengths, your super skills, for example, and you might use the words like creative, relationship creator, make the complex simple, then you can start to validate your self-perception with feedback from others. So that's what I was just saying before. Write this down, ask yourself all these questions that we've gone through here, oops, um, and and then that will help you, right? So you've got the here you. Write those down and then don't show this to anybody and then speak to someone and say, hey, I'm doing this little personal branding exercise and I would love your input in it. What are the top five things that come to mind when you think about me? Really interesting. And it's interesting. And like I said, you might get things that you're like, oh, didn't realize that was a skill, but maybe it is. So really great feedback. <coughs> Ten years from now, this is so powerful, and this goes back to that book. And I don't know if any of you, you know, read the Secret or you know the Law of Attraction, all that kind of stuff, which I think is fantastic. And honestly, it's going back to that book, Think and Grow Rich. It is actually about where you see yourself, your personal brand, whether it's your career goals, your relationship goals, your fitness goals, whatever it is. Where do you see yourself from now to in ten years' time? right? Write it down, write it down, write down, like, you know, and there's a, such a power to, to being, to clarity and to writing things down. So I really want you to write down what your personal brand and what your goals look like and what you, who you are in 10 years time, you know, and write it in first person. I am so glad that I have been able to create this great personal brand for myself that has allowed me to earn X amount of dollars, that has allowed me to help X amount of people, that has made me to have this kind of impact on the world, that has helped me, you know, be so crystal clear in terms of what it is that you want to, you know, and, and when we talk about personal brand, you know, we, what's the point of creating a personal brand? right? The long-term thing, the long-term thing, and it goes back to what is my why, right? There, You need to have an objective. You need to know why you want to work on your personal brand as well. If you want to just make more money, well, that's great. That's your personal brand. That's great. But 
Think about your objectives to creating a personal brand, right? Because once again, if you get clear on what your objectives are to creating this personal brand, then anything you put out into the world in regards to your own personal brand is going to align itself with that objective, right? If your objective is to, you know, help build a hundred schools in in Africa and you want to build your personal brand because your objective is to achieve that, then you know the kind of content that you're going to put up is going to align with that long-term vision of you helping build a hundred schools in Africa. So you've got to kind of be clear on what your objectives are in order to start to really create that personal brand of yours. So yeah, definitely um, do this exercise. I think it's fantastic. I actually do my own every year, especially like at the end of the year, beginning of the year, I like to kind of go, okay, what are my goals? What's my even 12 months? You know, you've got your short-term, long-term goals. And it's really interesting to see, you know, the clearer you are, the more likely you are actually to achieve it, believe it or not. So it's a really, it's a really exciting little exercise to do if you've never done this before. This is another really great book that I'm reading at the moment. I haven't finished it. My plan is to finish it over, um, over Easter. We're going down south, can't wait. So I'll have a couple of days to just relax and hopefully read. My three-year-old isn't jumping on me the whole time. Um, so it's called Building a, St a Story Brand and it's clarifying your messages to so customers will listen right so it's all great having you know this vision and these values and this brand but you then need to really show people you need to convey messaging in your brand as well so i did a workshop about oh, it was during the midst of covid which has been going on for quite a few years now but i remember it was i think the first year or the second year i did a workshop for it was actually for murdoch as well but it was online and it was on personal branding as well and we talked about what makes a personal brand and i think the i think they said oh give me one word that you would say is means personal brand to you and i said authenticity right so i genuinely genuinely believe that being authentic it's like that saying be yourself everybody else is taken is honestly the core of any strong personal brand and the most discomforting thing for most people is that they feel like they're putting themselves out there and they're a little bit scared because it's like well oh this is my personal brand this is what i want to stand for but it's really uncomfortable to kind of put yourself out there so you can slowly ease your way into it, whether it's videos, whether it's podcasts, whether it's, you know, anything and everything. But, you know, to be or to have what only a very small amount of the population have, you need to be willing to do something different. You need to step out of your comfort zone. You know, I love this saying. I'm full of, obviously, quotes. If you don't challenge yourself, you don't change yourself right? If you don't challenge yourself, you don't change yourself. So what can you do to challenge yourself this week, this month, this year? You know, we're already in April and you will not, so you've got to give yourself these KPIs. You might say, okay, I'm going to work on my personal brand. And as part of this activity, I'm going to do one video a week uh, talking about my subject matter or my expertise, or I'm going to go and, you know, reach out to podcasts and see if I can, you know, become one of the, you know, talkers on this podcast about my subject matter. To build your personal brand, you need to get out there as well, right? It's not just about going, okay, well, this is my personal brand. Remember the three steps is knowing what you want your personal brand, creating your personal brand, executing your personal brand. And then the fourth stage is that consistency, right? So without, without, you know, the first and second stage, fantastic if you do it, but if you don't execute, then you're not going to get the traction that you want. So the third stage is extremely crucial, as is the fourth, which is consistency. So really, really important to um, give yourself some KPIs in terms of the activities that need to be undertaken in order for you to strengthen your personal brand. Be consistent. As I said, tell a story. Stories are always going to have a lot more emotion to them than, you know, and, and a lot more responses than you know, something that's rationale. So definitely, and this is a really good book because it talks about how to tell a story and how to really clarify your messages to your customers, which will, you know, as a result, get more people to follow you, to like you, to engage with you, to listen to what you have to say. Um, and, you know, hopefully that will grow your business as it grows your business, then, you know, you have the resources to go and do more things that you really want to do. So elevator pitch, remember this is one of your bits of homework that I would love for you to be able to do. Um, and to craft a great pitch, follow these steps. Identify your goal, explain what you do, identify a problem, propose your solution, put it all together and practice it. And you not, you might not have your perfect elevator pitch from 
the get-go. But you tweak it, right? You can go, okay, this is my elevator pitch and I'm going to, you know, you can practice it with a few people and say, hey, this is my elevator pitch. Now, one thing that I will say is this, what I've noticed a lot, in particular with like um, uh, people that are quite tech savvy or engineers or accountants, they create an elevator pitch that is um, aligned with their business, not aligned with their audience. You've got to speak to the audience, not your industry, right? Don't write for your industry. Don't create an elevator pitch for your industry. Create an elevator pitch for your customer, write for your customer, right? Because, you know, I find people that are quite technical, they generally speak in quite a technical way, which, you know, I, you know, complexity is the enemy of execution. If someone doesn't understand what you're trying to say, then chances are you're going to lose them. So, when you are writing your elevator pitch, be really mindful that I'm writing this elevator pitch for my customer, not for my industry. Really, really important. What's my customer's problem? Now, if you're like, you know, if you're on LinkedIn, they do, I think Facebook do it as well. You can do a poll, right? You can ask a question, you know, what is the number one problem you have in your business? Or, you know, so think about what your business is and do a poll, get some market research. The more clear you are in terms of what people's struggles are and problems are, then the more clear you will be on creating your elevator pitch. But really key little component there is right for your customer or your client, not your industry, right? Because if you start using too much of your industry lingo, then people will go, what? I don't know. The whole point of them hiring us is because we can do something they can't do. So how do we grow our personal brands? So going back to point one is going, this is what my skills are, my values, what I want to be known for. Step two is obviously creating the brand. Step three is the execution. This is your step three. So how do we then get out there, right? It's all, you can have the most amazing, like I said earlier, most amazing concept, the most amazing idea, whatever. But if you don't know how to brand yourself and get yourself out there, people aren't going to hear about it. So almost the first two steps are going to be made redundant if you're not going out there and going, hey, this is, you know, this is who I am. That's how you build your personal brand. So these are some ways to get out there. And I actually haven't included one in there, but that, that I will include is to do presentations. Um, so social media, post on social media, content, educational, inspirational, conversational. 20% promotional, right? So social media is a way for you to get your brand out there. Radio, you know, get on radio, get on radio shows, call up radio stations. There's a lot of like great um, media distribution channels as well. The one that I use is called AAP MediaNet. So you can write a press release. Let's say you've launched a new product and you've launched a new business and you really want people to know about this, um, you know, or you've got a story to tell about your brand. You can go and you can distribute this release on AAP MediaNet. And that will help you gain authority. I do have a PR workshop coming up. They're all free um, through the business station. It's coming up in about two weeks, I think. And it's basically how to get PR for your business. So what I'll do is I'll put you on my mailing list if you like, and I'll, I'll send that to you guys. So if you do want to find out how to get some publicity for your business, um, I'll share that in that. Podcast, either start a podcast or be a guest on podcasts contribution to a publication so you might think men's health you know I've got this great product I, my, my brand is all about men's health I want to write a contribution for men's health you can literally reach out to them they're always looking for stories all publications all media uh, you know are constantly looking for stories so you know you can definitely become that thought leader and contribute to publications and that is going to help build your personal brand obviously you've got traditional media <clears throat> like like print tv YouTube and or presentations. So, you know, going out there, like, for, for example, you know, I've done quite a bit of lecturing now at Murdoch and at UWA and, I've, you know, a lot of organisations kind of hire me to go and talk about, you know, LinkedIn and personal branding and things like that. So, you know, if you get out there and you talk about your subject matter chart and then you promote that, you've been like speaking about that, then that is going to then gain credibility and authority around that subject matter, which in, you know, in, in return will, will get you even more personal branding. So it's kind of like a cycle. Um, but think about this. You've got your brand. You've got your guidelines. You know what you want to be known for. You're clear on your 10-year goal. Now you've got to go and execute. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are your activities? And write yourself a KPI because you know just as well as I know that we are our own boss, right? You, No one will hold me accountable but myself. No one's going to go, Sandra, 
you didn't do this this week, but a fat of you, no one but myself, right? So this is the part, the hardest part, I believe, of being a business owner is that you've got to constantly hold yourself accountable and you've got to constantly be working on your personal brand as well as your business brand. So give yourself some KPIs. The easiest way to make sure that you're doing the work that you need to do is to give yourself some KPIs, key performance indicators. So for example, I'm going to post two times in social media. I'm going to reach out to this publication. I'm going to do this YouTube video, right? And you might feel like, gosh, I don't have time. How am I going to run my actual business by doing this? But honestly, at the beginning, it takes a lot more because you've got to get that momentum going. Not sure who that is. Someone's at the door. Anyways, sorry, two seconds. I just asked my husband, Mike, can you open that? Someone's at my front door. All right, so anytime we start a business, you've got inbound marketing and outbound marketing, right? So for me, sorry, I'm just seeing something has arrived. So outbound marketing and map art. So anytime we start a business, whether it's a personal brand business, whether it's a whatever it is, you've got outbound marketing, inbound marketing. So the ratio is this. When we start a business or we start building our personal brand, the first probably six months, it's a lot more heavier on outbound marketing. So what's outbound marketing? It's getting out there. It's kind of what the word says, outbound. You've got to go out there, whether it's brochures, whether it's social media, whether it's networking events, whether it's PR, it's about getting out there. Inbound marketing is people coming to you. So it's referrals. Google is really good for inbound marketing because people will type in, you know, I don't know, health coach Perth, and that will come to you. So the ratio of outbound marketing and inbound marketing becomes more balanced as your business progresses. So at the beginning, when you're starting your business, you know, a lot of people kind of go, oh my God, business just isn't working for me. Things just aren't working. And I'm like, okay, what are your activities? What, what are your outbound marketing activities? And they're like, oh, um, really not doing anything, but it's not going to work unless you put the work into it. Right, so you need to put some outbound marketing activities in your to do list in order to grow your personal brand. Right, so social media posts, reaching out to podcasts, sharing thought leadership pieces, doing a YouTube video, um, you know, things like that. A few months ago, this happened, which was quite, quite um, just a really quick story. I, I had a, um, a publicist reach out to me from Koshi's Business Builders. Um, if you've heard of the show, it's like on Channel 7, um, and it's about people businesses businesses basically in Australia and she was the publicist she was sorry she was the producer for the show long story short they were in lockdown in Sydney and she said look we're looking for a Perth business to do this to do like a story about their business and I said as she said to me you know you're a PR company do you have a client that we could do a story on for this show and I said yeah absolutely so I reached out to one of my clients and I said hey would you be interested in doing this story long story short he did the story it was on channel seven it was fantastic but what happened was I was speaking to her and she was like, oh, that was really great. Thank you so much. And I said, Cindy, if you ever need anybody to talk about marketing or LinkedIn or anything like that for one of your segments, I would love for you to consider me. Right? I would love for you to consider me because, you know, this is kind of what I talk about. Da, da, da. Long story short, about two weeks later, she called me. She said, hey, Sandra, it, it, something's just come up and I would love for you to, um, you know, be on this segment and talk about LinkedIn and, and, you know, marketing and things like that. And literally we had the producers, well, she was in Sydney still, but we had the cameraman and all that. And yeah, it went on Channel 7. So if I hadn't have put that out there that I was happy and I was wanting to do that if when needed, she would have never called me. But because I reached out and I said, hey, you know, if you ever need anybody to talk about X, Y and Z, I would love for you to consider me two weeks later. And then it went on to um, onto Channel 7 and that. So that's just an example of taking that initiative to get your brand out there. It doesn't always come knocking on the door. You've got to go and knock on some doors first and then the doors will start to open. So keep that in mind outbound marketing inbound marketing you need to put you need to plant those seeds out there in order to get some traction for your personal brand okay how to become a thought leader be authentic write thought leadership pieces share advice or expertise your insights write blogs be a leader in your field not a follower do videos talking about your expertise so these are some things you can do in order to um, become a thought leader 
Um, I need to go now. Another online meeting. Thank you so much. Da, 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 da. Thank you so much, Christine. We're almost hopefully finished. Um, thank you. And I'll send you the slides. What happens if you don't have a strong personal brand? You lose credibility. You don't get as many opportunities. You won't be as heard as others in your industry. And you won't be able to make as much of an impact. Because no doubt that every single one of us here, um, you know, wants to do something Thanks, Aaron, no problem. Um, you know, every one of us wants to do something that is going to make a positive impact. So by you having a stronger personal brand, by you being able to, you know, be heard and be listened to more, you then have an opportunity to make a bigger impact. So just think about that. I think we're almost at the end. Okay, we're not going to go into LinkedIn because we're not going to get time. But that brings us to the end because I've got a few more slides about LinkedIn, but I won't go into LinkedIn because we're going to run out of time. Um, does anybody have any questions about personal branding? So just to kind of quickly recap, skills, values, what's your elevator pitch? What do you want to be known for, right? Create the brand, then you've got to execute the brand, and then you've got to be consistent with that. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed that. I feel like, oh, at the end, I'm like, oh, I know everyone's going to go. It's 10.30. Was there any questions? Did you enjoy that? Um, anything that I didn't cover? I know we've obviously got, I look forward to this. I would love to receive the list you mentioned of possible ways to advertise. Yep. So, yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed that. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll send you all the slides um, today or tomorrow and I'll give you, like, you have my email. So if you do have any questions or you do need a little bit more consulting or anything like that one-on-one, -on -one, you can do that as well. Um, but, yeah, I've, it's been a pleasure speaking to you all and, you know, get out there, create your personal brands, create the impact that you know you're meant to be creating. Um, and, yeah, look forward to seeing all your content online. We'll be doing my homework. Great. Thank you. And please do your homework. And happy Easter, by the way. Thank you. Thank you for joining and have a great Easter. It's the one weekend in the year where we can hopefully eat chocolate guilt-free. So enjoy your chocolate um, and Easter with, with your families. And, yeah, hopefully. And like I said, I have lots of other workshops coming up. So I'll send you the link with my upcoming workshops as well. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.